Hong Kong has always been nice to Amnesty International. Despite their rather well-known anti-China bias, our community hosted them without molestation or interference in any way. One year, I myself was guest of honor and speaker at Amnesty International Hong Kong Group's AGM. But the way Amnesty has treated Hong Kong is pretty shocking. The um, NGO made big headlines in recent days with a story that a Uyghur student had flown to Hong Kong and been snatched and transferred to mainland China. Anyone who has any real understanding of Hong Kong would immediately know the story was false. We don't do that kind of thing. But of course, certain journalists took it entirely seriously. They have an endless appetite for stories that make our community look bad. Which is rather sad, right? But hey ho, what can we do? Anyway, it eventually emerged that the story was entirely untrue. The allegedly kidnapped man never even came to Hong Kong. Amnesty International did not apologize to our community in any way. It simply added two paragraphs to its original statement, the text saying that the story was not correct, and then attacking Hong Kong even further. And of course, none of the media has apologized or done any self-reflection for spreading an entirely and obviously false tale. Truth is, Amnesty International works very hard to harm our community. There are five things worth knowing about them. First, in 2018, a group of university students from Hong Kong were given an all-expenses-paid trip to the UK, where they spent time with an Amnesty International division called the Digital Verification Corps. They focused on media evidence on two topics, police brutality and overuse of tear gas on civilians. During the protests the following year, in 2019, two themes emerged to flood media coverage, alleged police brutality and alleged overuse of tear gas on civilians. Pure coincidence, I guess. Number two, during the 2019 unrest, protesters admitted using a technique where they would repeatedly step into the safety buffer zones and refuse to move, forcing police officers to physically move them. These incidents were filmed and edited to make it look like the police were attacking people for no reason and transmitted worldwide by Amnesty International. Three, one of the loudest voices at the Hong Kong Free Press for some years was a writer who claimed to be called Kong Zong Gan. He pretended to be a Hong Kong born Chinese person, educated here, born here, speaking for the Hong Kong people. And he gave quotes as such to most of the world's biggest media. But in reality, he was a white guy named Brian Kern who formerly worked for, yes, Amnesty International. Number four, the original absurd allegations of millions of Chinese Uyghur citizens being put into concentration camps came from a group called the Chinese Human Rights Defenders, who extrapolated that number from interviewing just eight people. The group pretends to be a, a grassroots organization from China, but really it's based in Washington DC. It gets finance from the US government and its public face is William Nee, former head of the Hong Kong branch of Amnesty International. Number five, in 2021, the media reported that Amnesty International were forced to close its Hong Kong operation because they feared for the safety of their staff after the city got a rather bland, mild security law, far milder than the equivalents in Western countries. The truth was that Amnesty closed its operation voluntarily during a period when the organization as a whole was having big financial problems and cutting budgets. There was a hole in the group's finances of 17 million pounds, its leaders confirmed at the end of 2020. On top of that, the group had to pay 800,000 pounds in compensation over the workplace suicide of a staff member. They demanded his family keep that deal secret. Now, at that time, Hong Kong was portrayed as having you know, forced amnesty out, but our community had done nothing of the sort. We've been very nice to them. As I say, I've been the speaker at one of their AGMs. You know, it's very telling to compare Hong Kong's welcome to them to the attitude of the Indian government, for example. In 2020, the Indian government came down hard on their country's Amnesty International unit. Uh, they froze all the bank accounts and forced the group out of the country. But here's the thing. The international media had minimal interest. There's no anti-China angle, so why would anyone cover it? Now, do you see what this reveals? 
it shows very clearly the media is not really interested in the truth about Amnesty International, or what it says. It's interested in how it can use the organisation to badmouth our city and our country. You know what they're doing is using fiction to create friction. What we all need to do is to have a little healthy scepticism about what we're told. And always read widely. Peace. <laughs>